So, I'm with Bridget Burns, who is running to become the East Vancouver Member of Parliament and who is running with the Green Party. Hello? Hello. So, there's something that makes you very different from most politicians and from most people in general, mm -hmm. and that's that you're vegan, which means that you don't need any animal products, no eggs, no cheese, no dairy, no fish, no chicken, no beef, etc. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that, why you have made that choice, how long you've been vegan? Sure. So I became vegan uh, 10 years ago, September 1st. It's also the day I started the vegan project with a couple friends and we started blogging and it was 100% animal ethics um, in the beginning. Um, and from there, just kind of grew our blog, grew my vegan commitment, um, learned obviously environmental aspects and health aspects um, along the way or benefits, I would say. Yeah. All right. So besides that, what makes you, well, first of all, uh, what makes the Green Party especially positioned to address the biggest problems facing the world, global warming, the, the problems facing the environment, mm -hmm. as opposed to like the NDP or the Liberals? Well, the Green Party has been committed to the environment for decades now. Um, and not only in Canada, but globally. So there's Green Parties in, I believe, 80 countries around the world. Um, and we also have, on the municipal level, Green Party uh, city councillors, parks board, and a school board members, uh, and provincially and federally. So there's a lot of benefit to have all levels of government being able to work together. Um, and they have the strongest climate target, climate action targets. So our uh, GHD reduction targets are the strongest. Um, we're advocating for a 60% reduction by 2030 to the below 2005 levels, net zero by 2050. Um, in a complete end to fossil fuel subsidies, pipeline expansion, and we are 100% against LNG and fracking of natural gas. Oh, that's, that's good to hear. So, <laughs> what can you talk about some ways that you, in your positions and in, in your personal platform, differ from the official platform of the Green Party and from Elizabeth May? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to my knowledge, Elizabeth May is vegetarian. Um, I was disappointed, as well as many of our, in, we have a, a thing called Slack. I don't know if everyone uses it, but it's- It's um, a chat program. A chat program, there's lots of different channels. So the Green Party of Canada has, we have a specific one, plant-based uh, candidates uh, Slack channel. And so we were all pretty disappointed when the little claws under food uh, came in. Uh, critiquing the food guide that came out, which um, I was not 100% happy with, but I definitely found improvements in it. I was happy with the improvements in it and really surprised it came from the Liberal government, to be quite frank. And I was like, whoa. Um, but the in our platform, there is this clause critiquing, wishing that there was more of an emphasis on uh, Canadian dairy farmers um, as a sort of good source of calcium and mm -hmm. low-cost protein, which of course, I 100% disagree with, and so do my other green or vegan and vegetarian uh, counterparts. Um, hopefully, and there was a lot of critique about it. I'm not sure why it was put in there, but it's definitely it's something I would try to get removed moving forward. I don't have that kind of clout in the party as a new uh, candidate, but once elected, I definitely hope to yeah. help with that. Yeah. So, all right. So sorry for the the cut just there. We had a volunteer come in that we needed to. But uh, my next question is, should we be worried that the Green Party would have an influence over you? That they would say, you know, don't speak out against the dairy industry. Um, you have to help toe the party line. Uh, absolutely not. A um, big difference between the Greens and other major parties are we don't whip votes. So no matter where the party stood on dairy um, as a collective or... Um, coalitions with other government um, parties, etc. I would never vote pro dairy and pro. And in fact, so part of this whole political process, I get emailed a lot of like um, form letters, kind of dear candidate, do you support da da blah blah. blah. And so the dairy, BC or Canadian dairy farmers have emailed me three or four times right now, like trying to get my support. And I finally emailed. I just ignore, ignore, ignore. And then finally, I emailed back and said. You've emailed the wrong candidate. I'm vegan for 10 years. You're not ever going to well, get my support. So they, I tell you, they do try to lobby uh, mm -hmm. political figures all the time, and they try hard. But 100% no. Did they <laughs> respond to that email? Uh, they did not. Okay. Yeah, probably in their best interest. <laughs> so, for example, if um, 
if there was some vote on whether to allocate subsidies for a new slaughterhouse or, or anything subsidizing the animal agriculture industry, you would be against that as well? I would very much okay. so. So we talked about how the party might have, well, how they won't have an influence over, the, no. over you. What about your influence on the party? How do mm -hmm. you foresee uh, your beliefs, specifically your, your dedication to welfare of, of all living creatures? How might that affect the party on a larger scale? Yeah, so I mean, I think that they're the most likely party to adopt plant-based values. And I say plant-based just because it's a little more palatable, like across the spectrum. Yep. Um, but I see them as be it being very possible. Right now, again, as a new unelected member, not too much influence, but once elected, absolutely. I hope to move that from our campaign even here. So this is a vegan office. Um, our events and everything we do are vegan. Also, like the environmentally upcycled thing, you know, our cardboard signs and our um, upcycled shirts and we screen print type things. So this is a very vegan campaign too, just whether people know that or not. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, we're having a rally on Saturday. I put in my two cents about can we have all vegan food. Turns out we're not going to have food at all, but I put my two cents in. They know my voice and... And I know there's, I'm not the only one in the party, and so I really hope to move Not forward. the only vegan. Not the only vegan, okay. yeah, yeah. So, moving forward, I would love to be able to kind of create an inner caucus, like yeah. a vegan green caucus, which is completely possible. If we all get, if all the vegan greens get elected, we can absolutely create, and you know, guess what? There's vegans that belong to other parties as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not the only ones. <laughs> so, we could create, essentially, like a, a oh, sorry. Sure. Oh, it's been an incredible community experience. Yeah, well, sorry again for another interruption. <laughs> another member of the community just came in and um, needed to talk with, with us. So, um, but back, back to the question. Um, so, yeah, as you mentioned, your, your office, your campaign office, all the food consumed here is vegan, and you're going to try to let that example spread throughout the, the party as a whole. Like, I, I thought that the best we had hope for is you just eating, ve eating vegan food and waiting for others to ask you, you know, why, why can't you eat eggs and dairy? But it seems like you're taking a much more active approach towards getting the party to live in line with its own values. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And if anyone's come to my debates, um, if anyone's been, I've been to about eight or 10 now, um, in my opening statement, I'm always mentioned that I'm vegan, uh, vegan activist, vegan blog, uh, event organizer, vegan festival, night market, blah, blah, blah. It's always mentioned. Everyone knows that's who I am. It's on my website. It's, so everyone voting for me knows that about me. Actually, I was just on the bus um, holding our uh, signs coming back from a uh, senior's home. There was a vegan guy, JC. Shout out to JC if you're watching. Um, was sitting across and he's like, hey, I'm so happy that like having a vegan running. And just same thing. It was so funny that we're doing this this day. But... He was super happy too, and and I think it brings back to you know ethical standards and walking an ethical line and, and living a life that I can fully believe in and, and hopefully spreading that message and that also spreads to like people and community and things outside you know yeah. not just farm animals or pets or that kind of thing or companion animals but people a compassion yeah. for our community which right now is very much needed here in Vancouver East. Yeah, so that that brings me to. The next question, why would someone who isn't vegan care that you're vegan? What, what does that say about how you, how you feel about other people as well, not just animals? Yeah, so I mean, just my compassion towards the community, living an ethical life. Um, I walk the talk. I don't expect anyone to do or advocate for anything that I wouldn't do myself. Um, something we did, we combined veganism uh, recently with um, uh, get out the vote registration. So uh, we were at Save on Meats, ironically, I know, but um, they prepared a vegan feast that we gave out to residents in the downtown east side and we uh, got people to uh, just we didn't there isn't voting but it was helping register to vote so a lot of people don't have ID or a stable home and so it can be difficult to navigate through re voter registration Pamela Anderson joined us a uh, long time activist yeah, I heard and about that. yeah so we got a lot of press and and yeah she's a green supporter she wanted to help us 
when I'm talking about the issues or what matters to voters here in Van East, um, I know the vegan community is really concerned about animal rights, and so am I, personally, um, of course. But here in Van East, we're the center of a homelessness crisis, opioid addiction crisis, or opioid poison supply crisis, um, in inequity in our society, and climate, you know, climate on like a grander level, like even beyond, like I know animal agriculture contributes to a big portion of that, but even bigger than that, we're trying to tackle fossil fuel industries, we're trying to change, you know, the very source of what our economy is based on, right, here in Canada and globally. Um, so when we're at the door, I mean, we, I talk about and bring the voices of the community and that's what they're talking to me yeah. about, you know. So are you saying that we need to put human issues we need to think about them instead of animal rights issues? Or? Not instead, but I think humans are animals too, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, Kanata, who came in here, she, I was telling her we were doing this video for yeah, animal rights that. activists, and she said, well, we're animals too. And I said, I agree, yeah. we are animals yeah. too. And so I think our compassion um, for all living beings could be like a really great message to bring forward in politics um, from the vegan community. I think that kind of try to make it a bit broader. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, I, the way I see veganism is it's a conclusion that we should be good for others. We shouldn't unnecessarily harm or kill others, regardless of how different they are from us. Whether mm -hmm. they're poor or richer, look different, or even if they're a complete, completely different species. And um, I just want to say that, again, I'm sorry for the interruptions in this interview, but the reason those happened is because on several instances somebody came in from the streets uh, Bridget just introduced them. She knew their name already. In one case, she gave them food. And uh, I've, I've never seen a politician act this way before. So well, I really appreciate that. It's our pleasure. We've been here since all, we've been here now for almost three months. And being in the community, we have so many people come in every day. Like we've met so many regular, you know, fo like regulars. I call them regulars is from the service industry. I used to, you know, when you have your regular customers, yeah, yeah. right? Like, yeah, we have regular customers come in all the time. We've had food during the summer after the farmers markets. We had, um, I had a farmer friend who would bring a bunch of leftover veggies, um, and also for my garden, and we leave it out front, kind of like, you know, take as you please type thing and. It's just community building, right? And I think vegans can do that so well, right? We already give so much of our time to, you know, unpaid activism and community work and, you know, standing up for those who don't have a voice. I'd really like to see that expand. And I know there are a lot of vegans in the community that do already expand yeah. that too, but let's grow that more. I think that that message can enter our political sphere and gain a lot of traction. Well, um Seems like that's what you're working on by <laughs> running this campaign. We're trying, Well, yeah. I know you're really busy, and uh, I thank you for your time. Well, thank you, Michael. All right. Thank you all for yeah. listening. <laughs>